Hey, welcome back to another video here at Fiscal Voyage. And in this video, we're going to talk about a news of a company, uh, Regeneron Pharmaceuticals, uh, Regeneron Stock. And because Trump actually used uh, some of his uh, antibody to help recover from the, uh, from the, the, the thing. And uh, we're going to talk about the stock. We're going to talk about uh, is it a good buy at current prices and the valuation and look at some of the uh, metrics for this company, the balance sheet, uh, revenue growth, net income growth, to determine if it's a good buying opportunity now. Trump treated with COVID-19 antibody uh, cocktail, you can see here, uh, it's up more than a uh, 5% surge in volume, uh, an apparent response to the, U the use of COVID-19 antibody cocktail, uh, the RegCov2 to treat President Trump, who apparently plans to leave the hospital today, so he actually did leave the hospital last night. Uh, President also received Gal Gilead Science Verkley um, Remdesivir, and I can't say this word <laughs> as part of this treatment. Uh, so let's look at uh, Regeron uh, Pharmaceuticals to see if the company is a good buy, even after this 8% surge. Uh, well, actually, it was 7%, you can see here. Um, as you can see, the company is on the high end of the 52-week 50 week range. So um, based on this, it doesn't look like good. But let's look at the fundamentals of the company to see if it's uh, a decent buy. You can see here PE of 21.3 uh, and earnings at almost uh, you know, $28, $29. So that's very impressive there. So let's look at the fast graph for Regeron here. You can see in the 2000, the company had negative earnings. There, they made 20 cents in 2004. Uh, then they really started to make money or, uh, you know, a profit in 2012 and then been growing it ever since. Uh, they had a down year in 2016. Uh, this year is expected to be up 18% versus 2019 and then 18% for 2021. So that's very positive news. Um, let's get rid of the this time frame here and let's look at more recent years uh, let me do it uh, seven years here I think this is a good time uh, you can see here that the company looks to be fairly valued based on this normal multiple of 23.9 um, if the company were to revert back to that mean you have a nice annual rate of return about 18.8 percent again the company is expected to continue to grow um, 18% in 2021 and 8% in 2022. The company doesn't pay a dividend, you can see here, 0% yield, uh, but it has an amazing balance sheet, 6% uh, long-term debt to cap. We'll look over the balance sheet shortly, uh, but overall, the company does look promising. You can see here, 44% growth in 2017, 40% in 2018, 8% uh, 2019, and this year, you know, with all the things going on, and if they have this antibody, 18% uh, growth for 2020. So it's very positive uh, growth. As again, 18% annual rate of return. We'll look at forecasting for the company. Analysts, uh, the six long-term growth analysts expecting about 12% growth uh, for uh, Regeron. Uh, as you can see here, if it continued to in this uh, multiple of 21, you can have a decent annual rate of return of about 10%. Uh, let's look at the estimates as well. Estimates are high. They were lower this year, six months ago, they were $27 a share, and now it's at $29. So that's very positive that been, the, the analyst has been uh, increasing earnings expectations uh, throughout the year, so that's positive there. Again, if the company continues to be around a P of 21, you have a decent rate of return, about 15%. So it's not a, extremely attractive as some of the other videos I've done where you see uh, you know over 20% annual expected annual rate of return but positive nonetheless uh, analysts have been you know miss so I wouldn't call these very accurate uh, estimates uh, but the company has beat it more uh, than the misses so that's positive there but overall earnings looks to be growing if we look at uh, Yahoo for this company uh, they're estimating about a 11% uh, five-year earnings growth uh, or 12%. I like to be a little conservative and come up with 11%. Um, if we look at the balance sheet for this company, uh, Morningstar gives it a two-star rating, which is low. Uh, some of the key ratio here, revenue growth has been around 17% outstanding. Net income growth, 33% growth, for the past three-year average, outstanding. 
um, if we look at the some of the ratios here, debt to equity ratio of only 0 0.2, uh, that's outstanding, very low debt. Uh, like I said, the balance book looks outstanding. Interest coverage at 108, which is outstanding. Uh, current ratio is good at 2.12. Uh, overall, it looks good. The company, the company itself looks really, really good. The valuation uh, looks okay. It's not an outstanding buy. It's a decent buy, in my opinion. Um, you can and expect, um, you know, a decent return on your money here. The only thing I don't like is that the dividend is isn't. Uh, they don't pay a dividend. And the growth rate is not, you know, as you saw here, 40, 40%. It's only 18%, uh, as slow as 11% as you saw in Yahoo. But uh, you can see even the trailing 12 month revenue is growing. So this is the past four quarters. It's higher already than the, la the total of last year. So that's positive news. Net income also higher um, for the past four quarters versus the all of 2019 so that's good news so these two quarters have been really really good for this company uh, the debt to equity ratio has been decreasing and you can see here 2012 2013 they had a higher debt to equity ratio and right now they have a 0. Uh, 0 0.08 uh, based on last quarter results so that's very good news so again the balance sheet looks really really good for this company and if we look at Yahoo um, they're ex expecting uh, $28.55 for this year. That is similar. No, it's a little lower than the um, uh, fast graph estimates, but still higher than 2019. So that's still positive there. Uh, revenue, you can see here, $8.14 billion for 2020 and $9.46 billion for 2021. So that's good uh, growth there. It's about 3% growth and 60% growth versus uh, this is versus 2019 and this is versus 2020 so it's still positive growth right there so overall the company is a really really good company the valuation the price that we're paying for this company looks to be fairly valued to slightly uh, overvalue I think uh, but it still presents a good buying opportunity I think uh, long term for this company personally I'm not buying uh, again because I'm a dividend growth investor I tend to buy uh, you know stocks that have payout dividends and continue to grow it but i just wanted to cover this company because of this uh recent news so you know maybe uh people are looking up uh at this company and see what's uh is it worth it so those were my thoughts on regeneron pharmaceutical or regeneron stock um let me know in the description below have you guys uh, heard of this company what other pharmaceutical company are you investing in to help fight this uh, uh pandemic and also, if you're new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And also, check out my free ebook in the description below. Uh, five quick metrics to look for before you spend more time in uh, looking at any particular company. So, I see you guys in the next one.